It's important to know why all these migrants keep coming to the United States from all over the world. But more importantly, the real question is, how do we make it stop? This is The Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. It's going to be an abbreviated podcast today because I am on the edge of civilization with almost no bandwidth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play for you a, a little bit of a rerun from episode 10. Those of you who have joined the podcast more recently probably haven't seen it anyway. And in that episode, we have a really good discussion about not only why these migrants keep trying to come to the United States from all over the world, but how to make it stop, how we can allow these people to live better lives, more dignified lives in their home countries without coming to the United States. Check it out. News broke on Wednesday that the U.S. is preparing a full withdrawal of all U.S. troops in Syria. I also did recently an in-depth look at the situation there on, in episode eight. But this sudden announcement kind of throws a wrench in the works over there. Especially concerning is what it, that means for the Kurds in Iraq and Syria. Because without the U.S. there as a buffer, Turkey might just feel emboldened to start attacking them. And that's not going to be good for anybody. Now, I'll keep an eye on that, and I'm hoping to go to Syria and report on that directly in the next month or so. Now, yesterday on the Drudge Report, they were running this headline, which kind of made me do a double take. It says the U.S. is giving $4.8 billion to Mexico, which is coincidentally about the same amount of money the Trump administration has been threatening to shut down the government over in order to secure funding for the border wall. So the headline makes it look like the president caved and gave up plans to build the wall. And not only that, somehow had that much money available to cut a check to Mexico. Even the AP article on the subject led with the headline, quote, U.S. pledges 10 billion in aid for Central America and Southern Mexico. Now, this is the epitome of dishonest reporting because most people won't read any further than that headline. But it didn't take much journalism for me to figure out the details of the actual story. So here it is. No, the president didn't just cut a check for $10 billion of the people's treasure to Central America. No, the president didn't just throw in the towel on building the border wall. Listen, there are a few government-run organizations that actually make money and don't cost the U.S. taxpayer anything. Some federal law enforcement agencies, for example, bring in more money than they spend through seizures of drug money and property owned by the dealers they arrest. Another agency like that is called the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, or OPIC. It's a U.S. government agency that gives loans to U.S. businesses to help them invest in overseas developing markets. They do this to help advance U.S. public policy and national security. And they actually make a profit because the businesses they help get started pay back those loans with interest. So they really don't cost the U.S. taxpayer a dime. The pledges being reported in the, in the news are being made through OPIC. That agency has struck a deal with the Mexican government and other Central American countries to increase the number of loans and investments they'll encourage in that region to try to increase economic opportunity for Central Americans through the investment of U.S. businesses. Now, that's exactly what I've been saying is one of the ways that we can discourage people from coming to the U.S. and looking for jobs. It won't cost the U.S. The US taxpayer anything. If anything, it'll make a few U.S. taxpayers some money by helping them start businesses that are profitable in Central America. I mean, hey, maybe I should ask for a loan to expand my business here. All right, so there are a couple different ways that investment in Latin America can help people down here in Central America not have to run for the United States to have a better life. One is to start small businesses. So this is the gym that I started down here. This is Carlitos. He gets paid to help out around here, clean the gym, and make sure people pay their bills. But there's an even better way, I think, to help people not have to go to the U.S., but be able to actually work there. And that's to give them the opportunity to work remotely. And that's what I've done here with my... Uh, production company, my video production company that I have down here in Panama as well. So these are a couple of people who work for me that are uh, basically helping with the stock footage business that I have. And what that means is when I come back from a trip, 
I take the footage I shoot, I download it to these guys, they process it and then upload it uh, and put it up for sale. And so essentially they're working in the United States right now, but they're doing it from here in Latin America. And that allows them to stay with their families, to not have to leave everything they've always known, and to actually make a better living because the money that they make goes farther here than it would in the United States. One of my best friends here in Panama, Graham Davis, came up with what I think is an even better long-term solution to help people in Latin America not have to run to the United States, but to help them right where they are. Honduras, Honduras. The massive caravan currently making its way north through Mexico is no isolated event. Immigrants from around the world have traveled this route for decades. Making the 1,400-mile trek is always a difficult and dangerous undertaking. It would be all but impossible if it weren't for some organizations that encourage and assist these travelers on their way. This most recent caravan has prompted many to ask about who is helping facilitate what's becoming one of the largest mass migrations in modern history. Mexico recently elected a pro-migrant president. But the Mexican government is having trouble deciding how or even if they should help these migrants who have come into their country illegally. So I'm just outside of Tapachula in southern Mexico and a group of migrants just walked by there behind the main group, but it's still a couple hundred people. And uh, they were stopped by some immigration agents in several immigration vans, basically just encouraging them to take the legal steps necessary to declare uh, asylum in Mexico. But the migrants didn't like that idea and they ran off. And so now the police and the immigration authorities are kind of standing around trying to figure out what to do. I don't think anyone can see these images of women marching in the hot sun or sleeping on the streets at night with their babies and not have a tug at their heartstrings. But many people are starting to ask whether or not charity has to include encouraging people to make bad choices. They don't need to leave. They can stay, set in roots, and develop their own land. Graham and Nicole Davis moved to Central America five years ago to help young people break the cycle of violence and poverty. We have based our foundation on the obvious principles that it makes more sense to meet people where they are. It's much more cost effective and it's much more successful than moving them across borders and forcing them into a new education system. We meet them right where they are and care for them and they grow. We're earning the right to be heard by moving into their neighborhood and educating them. Our students aren't running for the border. They see the value in being where they are and growing in leadership. The Advanced Project develops leaders in the developing world. That's what we do. Through mentoring, education, leadership, and the gospel, this family is making a difference by showing a young generation of Central Americans that they don't necessarily need the United States. What they need is Jesus. I'm Chuck Holton in Chiapas State, Mexico. So the headlines are really egregious in this case. The Trump administration is getting U.S. businesses to help address the push factors that cause people to leave their homes and come to the U.S. looking for opportunity. That's a smart move. And it doesn't mean giving your tax dollars to Mexico. They're still pushing hard to fund the border wall, but they're looking for alternatives. Now, let's take a look at something else the media has kind of all but forgotten. And this year, the U.S. was hit by two major hurricanes. First, when Hurricane Florence pounded the coast of North and South Carolina with just epic rains and flooding. And a few weeks later, when Hurricane Michael came ashore in the Florida Panhandle and all but wiped some of those beach communities off the map. I was there for both storms and actually rode out Hurricane Florence with my daughter, Amy, at Ground Zero in Surf City, North Carolina. Amy thought it was a great adventure. And Amy going out in the storm. The flooding really did a lot of damage, though, and there are still people who are living in motels and shelters because their homes are unlivable. But local volunteers and businesses are donating money and goods to give these families a little bit of joy this Christmas. In Lumberton, North Carolina, uh, which is one of those communities that was hardest hit, community groups came together this week and threw a huge Christmas party for 35 families who still don't have a place to live. Now, I love seeing stuff like this, don't you? A couple weeks later, I rushed to North Florida to report on the aftermath of Hurricane Michael. 
And the destruction there was quite a bit worse than what we saw in Florence because the incredible winds spawned by that storm were just unbelievable. I mean, I saw a cargo train that had been tipped on its side by the force of the wind. How hard does the wind have to blow to flip over a train? I spent three days flying around in a helicopter surveying the damage there, and it was just so much destruction. And I'm sure people on the ground wondered how to even begin putting their lives back together. But again, it was really gratifying to see so many people who gave of their own time and resources to drive into those affected areas with food and water and help. See, if you ask me, this is what makes America the greatest country on earth. It's the goodness of our people. Look, I've followed wars and disasters around the planet for 15 years, and I've never seen another country where so many people rush in to help people they don't even know when they're in need even at their own great personal expense. But now that the media kind of moved on, the needs in North Florida are still there, and people need to know all about it. So here's one example. I'm Lewis Swat III at Youngstown, Florida. And this is your, where you live? Was where I lived until hey, they got destroyed. So you've lost everything? Lost everything. Well, what are you going to do? Don't know yet. Don't have no insurance. Not able to work right now. My wife's not able to work, mm -hmm. so we're just trying to figure it out. Yeah. What are you? What are your biggest needs right now? A place to stay in, where she can get in and out of the house because she just uh -huh. don't want to leave from up here. I bet she's been here all her life. She's lived here all her life. Oh man, this so is actually her granddaddy's property she inherited. Oh wow. All right, so I'm 25 miles inland right now from the coast and it is still just an incredible scene of devastation. I mean, there's whole forests that are just clear cut by this storm and anybody that lives with trees around their house is in big trouble for that alone. Now, one of the things I want to point out is that as you get out into these rural areas, the people who can least afford to replace their homes are the ones who have really lost the most. And it's going to be a long time before they get back their electricity. In some cases, even their running water. Now, I've met a guy just recently who has a ministry that goes around and gives out water purifiers to help people make their own water until the city gets the water turned back on. My name is Joe Hurston, Air Mobile Ministries. We have a water purification system that saves lives. So this little machine will generate between 20 and 25 gallons per hour. That turns out to be a thousand people a day. And we do it all on 54 watts, which is less electricity than a light bulb. We first um, put the machine in the field 15 years ago, and uh, we've, we've been able to put um, 1,300 machines in 47 countries. Literally hundreds of thousands of people are drinking clean water today because of this machine. We're able to manufacture the machine, raise the money for them, and then give them away to people who can't afford them because they're facing the worst disasters of their life. What a good way to fulfill what Jesus said, I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. And they said, when did we ever see you thirsty? He said, when you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. Now, I spent several days with Joe Hurston during Hurricane Michael, and I can tell you he's the real deal. He builds these amazing water filters at his home and then raises money so he can give them away to people in need. Over a thousand already. I love that. If you'd like to partner with Joe or find out more about his ministry, just go to airmobile.org and you can read all about it. And if you'd like to help that man in the video that you saw, you can donate to support this podcast at patreon.com slash hotzone or PayPal me at hotzoneholton at gmail.com. Any money we get before Christmas, I'll send on to Lewis White III to help his family with their ongoing recovery. Well, there's so much more we could talk about today, but we're out of time. I hope you're getting into the Christmas spirit. And what better way to do that than to help somebody in need? So find somebody in your own neighborhood, or like I said, donate to this podcast and we'll help some people together. Because I don't just want to make the news. I want to make the news good. So I'm Chuck Holton. See you tomorrow. Thanks for being with us on The Hot Zone. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.